Welcome to the Kernel series. Today let us discuss about diagnosis of pregnancy. So let us see about the diagnosis of pregnancy. It varies in first trimester, second trimester, third trimester. So commonly patients present to us in the first trimester. So let us begin with first trimester by history. What is the common complaint that they come with? History of amenorrhea. So in a reproductive age group, if any lady presents to you with history of amenorrhea, then you should always rule out pregnancy. Secondly, there is early morning sickness or nausea or vomiting sensation. Thirdly, heaviness in the breast. And rarely, people can also present with increased frequency of maturation due to excessive anti-version of the uterus where the uterus will be lying on the fundus causing increased frequency of maturation. These are the common complaints where a first trimester lady comes to us. Coming to the examination, there are collected certain signs in first trimester which you can see and tell that this is pregnancy. Starting with the breast, you can see enlargement of the breast, you can see hyperpigmentation of the areola and the nipple, you can see Montgomery's tubercles which are more prominent in a darker women. Next, coming to the per abdominal examination, you should know only after 12 weeks, uterus becomes the abdominal organ. Till then, it is a pelvic organ. So, you might not be finding much findings on per abdominal examination. Next, coming to the pelvic changes. There are so many signs which you can see on the pelvic organ, especially the vagina and the cervix, which helps you to diagnose the pregnancy. And these are very important questions for your MCQs and viva boys. Firstly, the Chadwick sign. Chadwick sign is bluish or a dusky discoloration of the vagina and the vestibule, mostly on the anterior vaginal wall. Other than this discoloration, there are other signs on the vagina, like the vagina becomes very soft and there is increased secretion seen from the vagina. Lastly, the Osiander sign, where you can feel the pulsations. When you place your hand in the lateral fornix, you can feel the pulsation. Osiander oscillating like that, you can see the pulsa feel the pulsation. That is the Osiander sign. So these are the vaginal signs. Coming to the cervical changes. What is the cervical sign? The Goodall sign. Goodall sign is nothing but the softening of the cervix, mostly seen in primary gravida, where the softening of cervix is too much because of the again increased vascularity. And also, you can see on perspicular, the cervix also is highly bluish in discoloration because of increased vascularity. Next, coming to the uterine changes. Uterus changes in size, shape and consistency. So at around 6 weeks, it will be as big as that of an egg. And at around 8 weeks, as big as that of a cricket ball. And at around 12 weeks, it will be as big as that of a petal head. This is how the uterine size increases. And after 12 weeks, it becomes an abdominal organ. The other uterine signs are Hagar sign, where the implantation of the fetus will happen at the fundus. So, if this is the uterus and here is the implantation, when you do a bimanual examination, one hand in the vagina and one hand in the abdomen, as you can see in the photo, you can see you can compress between the two walls of the uterus. This is the Hagar sign. If this is the uterus and you can compress the two walls because the implantation is in the fundus, this is the Hagar sign. The second sign is the Palmar sign where uterus will contract in a regular rhythmic way in between 4 to 8 weeks period of gestation. When you place your finger in the vagina and wait for around 2 minutes, you can feel those contractions. But this sign cannot be elicited after 10 weeks because these contractions become very infrequent. Next, coming to the investigations. So, what are the investigations that we primarily do in first trimester? Yes, either serum or urine, beta HCG. The faster is the urine beta HCG, that is the CARD test. So, the different diagnostic tests for confirmation of pregnancy are immunological tests in the first trimester, that is with radioimmunoassay or without radioimmunoassay, that is with radioisotope or without radioisotope. Firstly, the ones without radioisotope, that is agglutination inhibition test, direct latex agglutination test, two side sandwich immunoassay or the ELISA. These are the non-radioisotope. And secondly, if you use a radioisotope that is iodine-125 for agglutination, then it becomes a radioimmunoassay. 
let us see what is the mechanism of these tests so as you know there is hcg in urine and blood in a pregnant lady you will collect the blood or a urine sample and then you will add anti hcg antibodies to it and if there is a hcg in the maternal blood these two will get neutralized so when you add a immunoassay or the radioactive isotope this will not get agglutinated so the result will be there is no agglutination then it is pregnancy positive and if there is agglutination that means there is no pregnancy so these are the radio isotope or non radio isotope immunological tests that you can do for confirming pregnancy other than this you can also do ultrasonography where you can do trans vaginal scan tbs as early as 4 to 5 weeks you can see a gestational sac and 5 weeks 5 days you can see a yolk sac and by 6 weeks you can see fetal pole and cardiac activity in trans vaginal scan and in a trans abdominal scan you can see a week later yes this is how you confirm pregnancy in first trimester so now going ahead with the second trimester second trimester by history again what are the symptoms firstly you will have amenorrhea secondly there is quickening in the first trimester that is the fetal movements first time when the mother feels the fetal movement it is called quickening they can appreciate quickening and also there is mass per abdomen which she can feel and the symptoms which are there in first trimester like nausea vomiting increased frequency of maturation will subside in her second trimester these are the clinical history that you will get coming to the examination in second trimester firstly you can see the breast changes which already were seen in first trimester which will get more prominent and also you can see the chalasma or the skin changes the darker and skin pigmentation of the cheeks and the neck can be seen these are the skin changes coming to per abdominal examination you can see on inspection the linea nigra striae gravidarum and on palpation you can feel the uterine height sometimes even after 20 weeks you can start feeling the fetal parts and external development can be appreciated after 20 weeks that is the liker is more compared to the size of the fetus when you move the uterus you can feel the baby moving inside that is more prominent if the head is in the pontus of the uterus thirdly you can feel the brachytonic contraction which are there in the pregnant uterus to supply the blood to the fetus through the placenta and also sometimes you can feel the fetal movements also and finally on auscultation after 20 weeks you can start hearing the fetal heart sounds and on vaginal examination you can again see the same bluish discoloration of the vagina and the cervix and you can also feel the internal development just like the external development if you move the cervix you can feel the head going up and hitting you back that is called internal development and coming to the investigation the ultrasonography to assess the fetal being to know the estimated fetal weight lacquer around the baby that is the amniotic fluid index and also the cardiac activity biophysical profile everything can be assessed and also you can do doppler studies to know if there is any growth retardation to the baby so before concluding the diagnosis of pregnancy let us see what are the differential diagnosis that is distended urinary bladder fibroid uterus ovarian cyst ovarian neoplasm peritonitis ascites these are the reasons causing distension of abdomen so but you also should remember pseudocystis what is pseudocystis it is a phantom or a false pregnancy where there is all symptoms of pregnancy but there are no signs or investigation positive for pregnancy they'll have amenorrhea they'll have fetal movements that is the movement of the bowel they feel as fetal movements there are all the symptoms but there are no signs or investigation saying it as positive for pregnancy thank you for joining this session i hope you understood and you'll be able to answer in your exams if you have still any queries refer to our book dr dc datta's textbook of obstetrics thank you have a great day